And I don't think he was that good. I'll revise my opinion subsequently. How do you feel he's progressed as a as a professional? Because he sort of made a few waves against particularly names of any note in his first 10 or 11 contest. Really put in a pretty solid performance against Billy Joe Saunders. He boxed levels above him before that. I think he sort of announced himself more on the world scene. It was a European sort of level in that competition. Where do you see him fitting in now? Like you say, sort of European European level, you know, a few more bouts time, a few more fights time, a fringe sort of world title challenger. But um, I, I think he came out of that defeat to Billy Joe Saunders with a lot of with a lot of credit. He showed that he can, he can really fight. You know, he's, uh, you know, I thought he was more just just a sort of name, doing all the things he's famous for and he's done. But actually, he showed in the second half of his fight with Joe Saunders that he can really grind it out. Come forward, it's very tough. He sparred with Carl Frock as well. Showed a few of the, uh, the hereditary genes of his dad in terms of uh, fighting and toughness, as, as well as, like you say, just being a, a box of, of flashy tricks and, and important tools that were sort of brought out of him in that contest. It'll be interesting to see how he develops, of course, winning that WBA sort of interim title from Dmitry Chudinov earlier this year. He had to make a defence of it. He's made a defense of it. He hasn't yet. I thought a rematch with Billy Joe Saunders might be on the cards, but that hasn't materialised just yet. And he still talks about fighting again if he does. Well, I think that's uh, some way off now. But as you mentioned, it's still another indication that you never quite know who you're watching at these competitions in the early stages of their careers. Certainly be one or two, perhaps more stars of the future. So really bear that in mind as you watch all of the lads in front of us. Connor Butler, Zachary Davis. Davis in the app, Southpaw starts. The boxing orthodox is watching those front feet. That's a nice uh, lead left hand from Davis. Cheered by his corner. Oh, a lead like right hand there in response from Butler. Some competent performers. Indeed. The referee just uh, having a quick word with Davis about pushing. A nice technical display between these two early on. Davis from Paul Green, the uh, pub in Birmingham, has already produced quite a few stars. It's Frank Gavin's gym. Tom Cheney, Tom Cheney, Gavin's amateur coach. He's behind him with all his, well, everything he achieved in the amateur game. First, first Britain to win a world gold medal. And Tom Cheney was in Frankie's corner in his recent world title well, defeat to, to Cal Brook. Yeah, Frankie Gavin just found himself a little bit overmatched against Cal Brook, and uh, rightly it sort of stopped at the midway point, really. And Brook showing really no signs of that horrific attack he suffered in back in the last year after beating Sean Porter. And, uh, yeah, nice early, nice opening round between these two. Really, really good crisp boxing, good clash of styles. Good skills on display from these two young men. Setting the standard early. Of course, it's the upper end of uh, the youth class, the A-class division. See why Tom Cheney there in the blue corner. So he's come from a few weeks ago, 18,000 people at the O2. Back to corner, one of his boxes in the youth division at the Harringay Box Cup. Wow. It just shows you the great depth and variety of the work that some of these coaches have to do, taking kids right from the grassroots all the way up to the top level and having to be a competent coach to be able to deliver the right level of information to the right level of boxer that they've got in their corner because I imagine the instructions that he'd be giving to someone at Frankie Gavin's level would be completely different to the type of instructions he'd be giving to one of these principally I suppose the same but really uh, a skill in itself 
also interesting to note that quite often when boxers and top boxers turn professional, they link up with a new trainer, or, you know, often for the sort of star amateurs, it's an experienced professional trainer. That doesn't necessarily always work. And if you know, Tom Chaney sort of like, yeah, we came back to him after a few years with other coaches, and maybe someone who knows you very well, that's so important that relationship between a coach and his boxer, maybe someone who's known you for most of your sort of boxing life can be the best, the best trainer for you, even if they're not experienced as a coach in the professional side of things or the world. Jab from Davis. <laughs> Lovely combination from Davis. Just knew that the referee keeps going his way. Look, there's just moved off to the right hand side. He got caught. My <laughs> butler just muscled him onto the ropes right in front of us at the commentary desk. With a right hand, fell short and called a counter left from Davis for his troubles. Great speed and skill. From nice work to the body from Butler. The hooks to the ribs and then trying to push the uppercut through the middle. You see Davis winding up looking for that left hand counter over the jab. It's a light, nice lead right there. Body work in this round from Connor Butler, but some of the better shots to the head have come from Davis. Just depends what the judges are looking for. And the timing from Davis has been a little bit sharper. And Butler reaching in with some of those shots, a little bit out of range. Again, nice right to the body. And he's not able to land as many upstairs, he is downstairs. So an interesting contest developing, L lunged in with a lead left uppercut there, missed and was caught on the counter and then Davis lands another on the bell, goes back to his corner with a bit of a smile. Good work from the man in blue. How did you see that one, John? It's quite hard to separate them, but good work from both actually. Um, Butler made things much more uncomfortable for him in the second round there. Um, a bit more aggressive. But those body shots were, were, were quite impressive. But perhaps because the body shots are on one the hardest of sport, you tend to think headshots are holding your sway with the judges. Body shots what you need for slowing down faster opponent, T yeah, tiring him, draining him. It was a deep intake of breath there from Zachary Davis. And he is perhaps the slightly quicker of the two. Whether body work was put in the bank by Connor Butler will slow him down. We'll find out perhaps in this round, perhaps in the next round. Davis back in that. Southpaw starts, right hand lead, throws out a lead, right hook, misses that twice. Butler leaps in, better right, better right hand timing from him there. Oh, that's nice again, finds the timing with the right Butler. Good start from the man in red. Again, the referee, for the first time today, he's got to warn for pushing. Southpaw jab is so difficult to get past if you are facing a taller opponent because it's so close to you. You see uh, Butler trying to sort of pour it away before he leaps in with a right of his own. Pad it down, creates some space for him to throw that right, so he keeps hovering his out there. 
looking very interesting clash of styles. It does land the right that time, and that's good work. And this is a much stronger round for the man in red. several occasions using the jab more as a protector for his opponent's jab uh, pour it down create some space and then land that lead right hand of course the right hand is more effective against the south court davis meanwhile looking for the opportunity to counter the right hand so real fencing match this one it's developed nicely over the last couple of rounds but he's looking relaxed he's holding his lead lead hand low which is sort of Frowned upon when it comes to textbook boxing because it can leave you open, but you've got fast reflexes in between like he has. He's bringing it up, bringing it up from low down, which is catching, catching his opponent. He's quite happy as well to lead with his rear hand. Well, that was a nice lead from Davis, and Butler responds instantly. But a really, really high quality. About this. So the first of the, the boys' youth bouts in the ring, and goodness me, Davis wasn't far away from coming straight down on our monitor here, but he's back in the ring, and the bell for the final round goes. Those three three-minute rounds. Of course, those are longer rounds than we've been used to. Four two-minute rounds, three two-minute rounds with some of the ladies' bouts, and these fewer rounds, but longer rounds. So a hotly contested one. I'm sure whichever way it's uh, been given, it will be. It will have been a close one. Very nice to see the two lads smiling and showing each other respect. So round comes uh, Dan O'Sullivan for the announcement of this one. So by and large, John, the decisions have been pretty much spot on. I think a split decision there does both boxers justice. Really, really nice contest. Went back and forth. Points, Davis looked to be ahead. Points, 